We were camped north of Tin Cup along Section 3 of the Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route. It had been a night of heavy rainfall, but this morning would include several highlights that we looked forward to, the towns of Tin Cup and Pitkin, and a spectacular drive across Cumberland Pass. It was a wet night. Hey, it was extremely a, wet. A damp, damp night. Now, um, it was a it was a heavy downpour for a while. Yeah. It's funny though. Like I said, I'm going to bed, and then 20 minutes later, it just started dumping. Yeah. So we are uh, headed to Tin Cup and uh, Pitkin and on past that. And uh, section three is 144 miles. Yeah. But it's a fast section, they said, because of all the long straightaways. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Well, I look forward to that. What I don't look forward to is losing Travis this morning. Yeah, yeah, I'm short timer today. Yeah, as soon as we hit, uh, get close to 50, I'm jumping on 50 and headed back to to, to Colorado. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day five of the Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route. Everyone rolling? Everybody's rolling. Okay, come on on the main road. It uh, rained really good last night, so everything's just soaking wet. Uh, we got fog this morning. Hopefully it'll burn off so we can dry out our tents later today. Must have been a really strong wind come through here because there's like three or four trees just dropped by the roots. Just recent too because all those trees still got their pine needles on them. No dust though, no dust. Yeah, I listened to your lesson yesterday. <laughs> Teacher Dorian.
headed down from Cumberland Pass. It is cold and windy up there. While in Pitkin, we picked up a few sundry items at the Silver Plume General Store. We also met Andy, a Colorado resident who had started the Cobder solo on his motorcycle down south. He shared a few of his experiences with us. We'd eat luncheon in Pitkin, inviting Andy to join us. I do the Orphea Pass in the in a rainstorm. Uh -huh. I get to um, I finish the Orphea Pass and I camp there, and it just stops raining, so I can just get the tent out, right? Right. The next morning I wake up, it's a beautiful day. Head over Thilberton and that is all beautiful. Animus Forks, all that, that's beautiful. Yeah. And I just love it. I've been there a lot. I live not far yeah. away from there, but I will never ever do that again. Hmm. There was traffic jams of UTVs. Oh, I mean yeah. a traffic jam. Yeah. I love this t-shirt. <laughs> we uh, stopped in Pitkin for a little while, had some lunch, met a fellow riding the BDR on a motorcycle headed the other direction, Andy, and talked to him for a few minutes. That's a cute little church. Look, it's got a replica of the church in front of it. So did either of you guys get that flood warning or flood watch? I did not. Got it uh, yesterday about noon. Yeah, I'm wondering if it wasn't just delayed. I didn't have a good data connection, so I couldn't read the whole thing. Yeah, Dad, when we get out a strong signal, um, we'll make sure that your uh, guy is synced up. I'll show you how to do that if you haven't done it or don't know how.
Hot Springs is uh, just to the right of us here. Yeah, they're right about this section three having some uh, pretty fast roads. They're all pretty, pretty good. I got a couple of uh, motorcycles approaching us. Two. Eyes on the motorcycles. They both waved. This is part of the Transamerica Trail right here. Oh, very cool. We're offered two routes, easier route of wet, and the other route, and we're taking the other route. Presumably the not so easy route. There's a D coming up, uh, take, take the right. says, please close the gate. Yeah, our turn is probably at that gate. Yep, this is the way. Last person, please be sure to close the gate. Copy that. Closing gate. Watch the barbs. They're sharp. I think this is our first gate to open and close. Yeah. 
While we were checking out the waterfall, we were also searching for a campsite. The close road back there. This is a dead end. Back there, you can see the tail of it. This right here, the trees are in the way to see the end of the waterfall. Yeah. There we go. That was good. Oh yeah. We are just getting camp set up. Just getting the gear dried out from last night and this started for the second day in a row we're getting rained on we just set up camp here oh goody it's hailing now go ahead wash all that mud off That was super close. I'm afraid that uh, my sleeping bag has gotten soaked wet again. I haven't looked at it. Because I foolishly put it back in the tent when the rain started. What I should have done was brought it over here. Uh, which doesn't mean I'm going to freeze tonight even if I sleep in the Jeep. Because I've got a wool blanket in the back there. and I can always turn the Jeep on and run the heater. But meanwhile, that... Uh, gut work of uh, putting these videos together is uh, ongoing.
Measurement of the rainfall, <laughs> along with my own contribution. <laughs> and I estimate we had at least an inch or two, because <laughs> there was a lot more water in there than I remember contributing to that. <laughs> no, that's funny. Well, it's pouring rain. It's actually slowed down a little bit, but probably start up again. And uh, I got a lot of work to do copying all these pictures. We shoot each day. I have to do this each day because it takes me about two and a half to three hours to copy it and make all the backups that I need. And so I've got camera gear spread all over. Okay, ignore the beer and the Cheez-Its. Okay, and maybe the bottle of wine. See how slow that moves? That's just one camera. 18 minutes left. And then I'll have to copy it two more places. But that'll, that'll go faster. I have a fast connection for that. <laughs> 